Computers, they're all around us, from sitting on your desk to hanging out in your pocket. They can be something as mundane as a thermostat to something all the way at the edge of our solar system. Computers have revolutionized the way that human beings communicate with each other and to the world around us. Welcome to Logix. My name is Hal, and together we're going to take apart a CPU, the mind of the computer, in order to figure out how it functions and how it works, and then, virtually, build one ourselves. First things first, let's talk about logic gates. The human body is made up of cells, you know, the little building blocks that make up our bodies. Computers are made of very basic parts as well. Believe it or not, there's a part that's so fundamental to computers that once it was invented, we can use it to make any computer today. I want you to imagine that a friend of yours presents you with a strange device that he invented. On one end he attaches a light, and on the other end two switches labeled A and B. When he finishes putting it together, you notice that the light is on, but the switches are off. Your friend tells you that this is a gate, and it controls how the power gets to the light. He then invites you to experiment with the switches. He wants to see if he can control the gate and turn off the light. When you turn on switch A, you can see that the power is going from the switch into the gate, but the light is unaffected. If you turn off A and turn on B, the light still stays on. But here's where the gate's behavior gets a little counterintuitive. If you turn on A and B, the light goes out. Because this device is a bit quirky, we're going to make a table in order to understand how the light was affected by the switches. These are called truth tables, and they're really useful in helping us decipher logic devices like this. In this table, we will call A and B the inputs and the light the output. When something is off, we'll mark it as a 0, and if it's on, it's a 1. In our gate, when A and B were off, the output was on. When A was on and B was off, the output was also on. The reverse, when B was on and A was off, the output was still on, but when A and B were on, the output finally turned off. It's as if both A and B are needed to alter the state of the light. This device is called a NAND gate, which is a shorthanded way of remembering how it functions. If A is on and B is on, then the output is not on. You can kind of remember it as negative AND, not AND, or NAND for short. Gates are normally represented by a symbol. A NAND gate looks like this. It's shaped like a D with a little circle on the nose. Remember that circle because it's going to be important later on. You can see there's two inputs on the left hand side and an output on the right hand side. If you're wondering how the switch is providing electricity to the output even though the switches are off, the power is coming from another source and assumed to be there. Computer chips have hundreds, thousands, or even millions of gates, and the power connections are not drawn in order to keep the clutter down. So now that you've been introduced to this peculiar kind of device, the question is, why is it so important? Well, sometimes this gate is called a universal gate, and it could be used to make any other kind of gate. Ever wonder how someone could build a whole computer in Minecraft? Well, once you have a universal gate, it's just a matter of plugging a bunch of them together to make a system, and that's exactly what we'll do too. Since we have our first gate, we'll create a few more with it that will be useful for us going forward. If we take the inputs from a NAND gate and tie them together, we change how it behaves a little. Now we only have one input and one output. We'll test this new configuration and write down what we observe in another truth table. This one is pretty simple. If the input is off, then the output is on. And if the input is on, then the output is off. We have made what is called a NOT gate. The symbol for a NOT gate is a triangle with a circle on the nose again. You can see it only has one input and one output. These are commonly called inverters because they invert or do the opposite of what's on their inputs. Notice how the NAND and the NOT have that little circle on the nose? That's called the bubble and it's used to indicate that the output is opposite of the logic. That's why NAND and NOT gate seem to act so backwards. So let's take our NOT gate and use it to make some gates that are a little bit more intuitive. If we take a NAND gate and place a NOT gate on its output, it will cancel out the inversion. Let's go through the truth table again and we'll see what's changed. When A and B are off, now the output is also off. Just turning on A or turning on B will not turn on the output. It will only be on when A and B are on. It's a proper AND gate now. An AND gate looks like this. Notice how similar it looks like to a NAND gate but the bubble is gone? That's because the logic is no longer inverted. Now the question is, is there such thing as an inverted NOT gate? Well, yeah, it's called a YES gate, but it's also known as a buffer. 
They don't do much logically, but just repeat whatever's on the input to the output, but sometimes they're using electronics as amplifiers. We only have a few more gates left before our toolbox is complete. Let's take some NOT gates and put them on the inputs of a NAND gate like so. Once again, we'll make a truth table. If A and B are off, then the output is off. However, if A or B or both are on, then the output is on. This is an OR gate. If we then place a NOT gate on the output of the OR gate, we'll get its inverted cousin, the NOR gate. The NOR gate is important because like the NAND gate, it is also a universal gate. I can't stress enough about how useful universal gates are. This is part of the actual schematics for the Apollo guidance computer. At the time, we only had the ability to mass produce, and I'm being generous, one kind of logic gate on a chip, the NOR gate. So we created the computer with rows and rows of single NOR chips and wired them together manually, and that's what took us to the moon. The last two gates are a little more logically complicated. If we connect up four NAND gates like so, we wind up with what's called an exclusive OR or XOR gate. We'll walk through the truth table and see what it does. If A and B are off, then the output is off. If A is on, then the output is on. If B is on, then the output is also on. However, if A and B are on, then the output is off. This means that if the inputs are different, then the output is on. XOR, of course, has its inverted cousin, XNOR. Here's a look at its truth table. Now we have the tools to make a computer, any kind of computer. I'm going to lay out the gates that we went over along with their truth tables. We have the buffer, the inverter, or the NOT gate, the AND, the NAND, the OR, the NOR, the XOR, and the XNOR. So today I learned about logic gates. You learned that they have inputs and outputs and can be represented with a truth table. You learn that logically inverted gates have a little bubble on their output, and also you learn that universal gates can be used to make any other kind of gate. I hope you enjoyed this first episode of Logics. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to put them in the comments down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe.